Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is episode 43, and today we have our first official look at Jimmy Olsen, and the photo pushes further evidence towards the retro-futuristic theory going on in Metropolis. And I have to say, I think I have worked out the exact motives behind all the costumes in Superman, and that will extend into the DCU as well. We also need to talk about the extremely emotional Superman trailer that came out for the movie movie that will tell the story of Christopher Reeve, and James Gunn did something amazing with this movie, so we shall get to that a bit later. But first, let's look at our first photos of Jimmy Olsen, shared by James Gunn. Skylar Gisondo looks great as Olsen here. He is exactly how Jimmy should look, and I think he will be great as the photojournalist from the Daily Planet. There have already been comparisons to Snyder's version of Olsen, who was a CIA agent and got killed off within the first five minutes of seeing him, which was a unique decision, but that's the beauty of these movies. Different takes present different versions of the characters, and I'm very happy we are getting a proper version of Jimmy Olsen in this new Superman movie. Now I want to draw your attention to Jimmy's clothes. I really like the look they are going for with him, and I think this hints once more at the overall fashion style style that they are going for in Metropolis. I know we covered this in previous episodes too, but please bear with me. I think it's clear now that they are going for a retro futuristic look to the city. Retro in fashion and design, futuristic in technology. It gives a timeless and unique vibe to the city, which is perfect for this film. And if we look at past set photos, look at the extras. Teal and brown and blue are the common colours among their clothing, and the actual style isn't something we see a lot of anymore. This is certainly more of a 70s or 80s fashion style, and I think this isn't something that just ends with the humans. I believe it is also how the heroes of Metropolis look as well. Superman definitely has a retro design, which is probably because he needs a suit that represents the city he is from. I think the costume design for this movie has been very specific, and it's the same way Snyder had his costumes designed as well. It's always been a about the story. Think about the tone and mentality of Snyder's Superman. He wanted to modernize the hero and make him more realistic and serious. So the trunks had to go because they didn't work for the tone he was creating, and the suit modernized as well. Darker colors were introduced, and the suit was now the chainmail of his family on Krypton, rather than being made by Mark Kent. So he made specific changes for the suit that reflected the story and tone of the film, but also the modern society it was set in. And James Gunn is doing the same thing. I believe the reason we have a more classic suit is firstly because Gunn is moving closer towards the comics, but secondly because the society that this Superman is within has a more retro fashion style and is used to superheroes being around. So a brighter costume with retro trunks reflects the society that this Superman is set in. And I know people will have mixed feelings on Gunn's design choices, and personally I hated it in the DCEU, as it was polar opposite to how the older DCEU costumes were designed. I didn't like how the more plasticky and flat looking designs were now a part of a DCEU that began very modernized and serious. The sudden change in design and tone just didn't work for me, there was no consistency and for me, it didn't fit within the universe that they had already established. But with the DCU, they are starting their new cinematic universe with a different tone and mindset. In Metropolis, everyone is wearing retro clothes and colours, which allows the heroes to fit in, but also stand out in their more original comic-accurate costumes. Now, for some heroes, I think that works. Like for Superman, I think it does. I do wish the suit was a bit tighter, but overall, I like the suit and we shall have to wait and see for other projects if their costumes work too. But what I find most interesting is how modernized the Justice League International suits are. And we talked about this too in the previous episode, but I want to re-emphasize my points and expand upon it. These are Metropolis-based heroes too, yet their costumes have a lot of white within them when their original costumes aren't supposed to. And what is the main color people use when designing something to look futuristic? white. That is the colour people associate with future designs. And I believe Maxwell Lord designed these costumes to feel modernised or futuristic, but it backfires just like the group do. 
they don't feel the connection Superman has with the people of Metropolis. Superman's costume reflects the city, and the Justice League International's costumes contrast the city. And that is a very important detail to consider. The very fact that fans are bashing the group's costumes just shows that they designed these costumes perfectly. They have achieved their goal. Visually and mentally disconnect people to these heroes, just like how the people of Metropolis feel disconnected to these heroes as well. Look at this video of the kids ignoring the group, but running to Superman. It's because he connects with them, he represents them, and that is shown through his actions and his words, but also how he dresses. This will be the visual connection between him and his city, and I love that. Now, in all fairness, this could just be a random theory that holds no truth at all, and actually they are just bad designs, but I feel Gunn has done this for a reason, and I think I have worked out what that reason is. I believe the hero's costumes will reflect the cities they are from, and I believe the villain's costumes will contrast the city they are from. And from the people of Metropolis's point of view, they see the Justice League International as the villains or at least not heroes. Now, I won't dive any further into it, as if I'm right, I don't want to spoil anything else. So, we shall leave it there. But now, let's move on to the Superman trailer. Not David Sweat's Superman trailer, but the movie documentary of Christopher Reeve's Superman. This movie will tell the beautiful and tragic story of Christopher Reeve, and just by the trailer, I know many will be crying when watching this. The film releases in theatres September 21st, and 25th, and Gunn revealed that he showed this film to the cast and crew of Superman, which created a universally emotional and powerful response. They all felt like a part of something larger than themselves, and that was a great idea. Getting the Superman cast and crew to watch something telling the story of Reeve and his time as Superman is genius. Now they have that extra respect and connection to him and his version of Superman, and I'm sure that spark and magic that that movie had will reflect in this movie as well. You never want it to be a carbon copy of someone else's take, but there is no issue in learning from them and being inspired by the best parts of them and taking that into your own film. I think that is what David and the rest of the cast has done, and so I'm excited to see this new take on Superman, but also this documentary too. But we aren't done just yet today. David's latest movie, Twisters, has revealed the video of the cast finding out that he had been cast as Superman, and it's fair to say they were pretty happy for him. Big congrats! Let's go! That's our Superman, baby! That's our Superman, baby! Yeah! I'm gonna try to fly! Clearly, they liked him enough on set to be celebrating for him, and hopefully we will all be cheering him on in cinemas on July 11th, 2025. But that is all for today's episode of The Road to Superman. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. I hope to see you here again soon, so until then, have a great day. Bye!